So, I was playing with this program in Maker World. If you have a bamboo machine, bamboo labs, they have their Maker World. And up there they have a section of it called Maker Lab. And in that section of Maker Lab, they have a program called Make My Statue. And basically you upload a single picture, just of like a like a mug shot or the shot on your driver's license or on your passport, that kind of a picture. And then from that, it uh, generates a three-dimensional file that you can then print. And uh, these are two examples. They have all kinds of controls in there. Once you upload the image, you can like add the glasses. I'll show you why you would want to add them separate and not use a picture if you wear glasses like me to begin with and uh, there's also features for smoothing where you can add material, subtract material, smooth material you can do a few changes like that they have some pedestals, it's supposed to look like it's a statue, you know, chiseled out of stone you can add a pedestal so it's up there and you can put your name on it I did learn that if you're not doing the pedestal you'll want to, after you get the file on your computer, crop the bottom out so you can get a smooth bottom. This was the first one I tried and it's a little bit tippy. But uh, I'm going to take you over to the computer here and we're going to I'm going to look at this a little bit and talk about it a little bit. The things that so far I do like and some things that I don't like. I you know, wish I could get the camera a little more level but I guess this is gonna have to do so anyway I'm at I'll put a link to this but I'm at uh, makerworld.com which I realize my finger wasn't in the picture makerworld.com and then you've got all these different places where there are 3d models contest forms supplies like if you want to buy parts for your printer stuff like that but there's one called maker lab so click on that and then if you scroll around through Maker Lab, you'll find this one that says Make My Statue. Now, um, down here, this is the uh, one that I just showed you over there. It's showing you the image after I had cleaned it up, but without the glasses added. And, and again, this is the cleaned up one, uh, the other cell. And then this is an alternate picture that I took of myself. These were selfies where I just took a selfie of myself and this one I had my glasses on when I did the selfie so if I click here and I can make this a little bit bigger you'll find that the, one of the interesting things that it did is it based on shadows and lighting it thought I had a mustache apparently because it looks like it see it gave me a kind of a mustache and kind of a scruffy beard look and of course having the glasses on to begin with is a bad idea because it just it's just part of your face then. They're not separate. So it's like a distortion. I mean, one of the nice things it did is it, it gave me a full head of hair, which uh, I haven't had in about 50 years. And I uh, haven't done any cleanup or anything of this because this brings us to the next step. Um, in order to get to this point, you, you load your single photographic image in and it goes through some steps and then it pops up to this and if you want to work with what you see here you have to hit confirm when you hit confirm then it's going to uh, use something called maker lab credits I honestly don't know what the hell they are I mean <laughs> when I got the bamboo lab printer uh, I went up to to uh, their maker world thing and I guess I must have set up an account then if you don't have one, you're going to have to sign in. You're going to have to make up an account. But I have no idea how I got uh, some Maker Lab credits, unless they just start you off with some. No idea at all. Anyway, I had 50. Now I've done two busts, and each one took 10, so now I'm down to 30 credits. So if I hit confirm on this one with a mustache, it would subtract another 10 from that. Um, I don't want to do that. But if I hit confirm and did that, then when then it would open a window over here and it would give you choices on how you wanted to modify it or if you wanted to have glasses, one that says glasses, you click it and there's a bunch of different types of glasses you can select to drag and put on the image and um, 
once they're there there's another button you can select to move things around rescale the glasses reposition them that kind of thing and then there will be a button that you can click like up here where you can do what I was talking about before for example if I wanted to make it more accurate I would probably go in with the smooth and I could smooth out everything that it's thinking is hair and just turn it into a nice uh, bald skull which is <laughs> what I've got let's uh, let's go back here and see if it lets me do anything with these ones that I've already paid for and done well there's some glasses sitting down there okay here we go so at this point where, where I was just talking about let's move the camera a little bit so you can see what's over here you can add a base so let's click the base oh and there's this little lever thing you need to move that so there's like three different types of bases this is base type one I've never even looked at all of them base type two well, that's not bad looking base type three so you can you can add these bases to them and then once you've added a base, this flat area here, you can add text to it. If you go down here and click add text, and again you got to move this little slider thing, then whatever you type on there, for example, Robot Hut, just hit enter, let's see what, what it does. Yeah, it put it, uh, it put it on down there. So when you print it, it'll actually have that text protruded out on the base. Cool, huh? And initially, when I did the glasses one, which you can see is up here, glasses, and it's turned on and those ones are on there, it made them narrow and it had the... Uh, the arms of the glasses just kinda disappearing into my head. Oh, and you'll notice this is showing the image not as how I printed it, but look, it gave me like this Neanderthal forehead. So I guess it was assuming that people have hair, so it kind of put a lump there, but then it sloped the forehead back. So I actually had to go in there on this mesh edit. Click on that. And then you've got buttons here, smooth, inflate, or gouge. So either add to or subtract. The size of the tool, you can see this green circle, you can change by moving this and then the intensity of the tool you can change by moving this and then of course you rotate this thing around and I think in this case I would want to inflate because it, to try to get rid of that Neanderthal thing going on there I'm trying to move this thing down So anyway, you sit there and you play with it and you you build it up and rotate things around. Maybe I need a little bit more intensity. Maybe I need a little bit bigger brush. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. So I can kind of build up some forehead in here. Now that's all lumpy and bumpy, but you get the idea. You can kind of keep building it up until it starts looking more like a human being. And then, of course, if you decide you took, you did too much, you can come back with your gouge or remove. And you can subtract stuff from it like that. And if you think you got it shaped about right, you can go back to your smooth. And you can try to smooth things over like that. So that's what I did to finally get the final um, head bust. <clears throat> like, like here, I added more forehead, I smoothed it. It had a lot of hair going up above my ear, so I smoothed a lot of that uh, hair out. So those are those tools. Now, once you get everything, and don't say it, once you get everything the way you want it, of course, you can then hit, click on the download, and it'll download as a 3MF and or an STL file. So let's close this out, and let's go into uh, Bamboo Labs. And I'll show you what 
it looks like with um, with supports waiting for bamboo to open up here I guess it's going to get around to it so here's the one that was actually printed click that and we'll put it on the plate Now I printed this at a uh, so as I was going to say is I printed this in a layer height of 0 0.16 for a little better quality as you can see I selected tree supports and I made sure the supports were enabled supports build plate only and tree auto and I knew the hard part was going to be trying to break the supports off around the glasses and it was. And in fact, when I uh, tried to pull the supports off, as I was well aware, I did end up breaking it there and there and there. So I had to super glue those those points. But that didn't surprise me. The, the glasses were so so thin that I knew trying to yank those tree supports off there was going to be a bit of a problem. So that's kind of what it's going to look like. If you want to see it... Uh, well, you've already seen it without the supports, but I think we can turn that off and wait for everything to reload here, maybe. Or maybe not. Prepare. See if it reloads it or not. Or if I have to get the file. I may have to get the file again because it was reloading it always a pre-slice thing. But you got the idea. You bring it into the slicer, you want a finer detail. I suggest tree supports. It's an interesting program. I'm hoping that uh, maybe some other uh, places end up doing the program because I don't understand the credit thing. I have some, so I'm using them. But uh, it does have a thing you can click there to get more, which didn't really answer any of my questions. But you might, some of you guys that m may have a bamboo may go up there and try to figure it out. And some of you that don't should try signing in and uh, just set up an account with them and see what it takes to actually get credits to do this because it's kind of cool. But the main point I was going to show you is you don't want to work from a single uh, photo. In the case of uh, this family member, I actually had over eight different pictures, and uh, this was the only one that turned out looking promising, turned out well. Uh, when it was running, it actually, for whatever reason, gave her a big Adam's apple, so I had to go in and smooth that out. And then you see this piece right here on her chin? I didn't see that till after I printed it. I've since gone in and found out, yeah, I could smooth that little chisel line out of there. And then it'd be pretty much perfect, exactly what I was looking for. Well, that and, of course, I cropped the bottom to make it smooth because it didn't leave a smooth one. And uh, once I learned that on that, it's what I did on this one, see? So once you do a little cut on the bottom and smooth it out, you end up with a really nice flat base. But it's kind of cool. It didn't cost anything. It makes a like a stone-like statue and of course I could have printed it much bigger this was the default size as it was but even on the little teeny A1 mini I could have uh, could have made this 20 or 30 percent larger if I'd wanted to make a make it taller there's still some room to move even on the A1 mini so there you have it it's kind of a cool thing I'm imagining that uh, others will follow. There'll be other programs that do it, probably free sites to bring this up because once somebody does something cool like this, everybody kind of jumps on it. And once they do, we won't have to maybe try to figure out what the Bamboo Lab maker credits are. 